What's going on to YouTube? Eddie here and I want to come on here and give you a recap of what I've been up to since trucking. A lot of you guys have been following me know that I left trucking to pursue other things and unfortunately it didn't work out as well as I had hoped and here's my story, right? So I left trucking to start selling cars. I get it. I get it. I've heard it so many times. It's it's cringing sometimes to uh, you know when I when I tell people that I used to sell cars or I was selling cars, right? You know, I get it, and you know a lot of them saying, "What's wrong with you? You crazy? Or just plain stupid?" I have really good intentions. I promise. Okay, and and here's my story. My wife and I actually has a friend that sells cars and he does very, very well for himself, sometimes making well over to 10 grand a month. And then I never really know that selling cars could be so lucrative, right? And why is no one talking about this, right? So I looked it up and, you know, it, it hit all points at that time, right? You know, obviously the money, right? Um, I, I get to wear nicer clothes, I go wear my watch. You know, spray on my little cologne, you know, looking fresh. So I decided to go all in. So I ended up applying to a dealership closer to my house, right? Uh, and the way they kind of sold me on the idea was uh, that it was kind of like your own business. And it made sense to me for a couple of reasons. One, it, it kind of resembled to me like real estate where, um, you know, as an agent, right? You, it's like your own little pseudo business without the overhead, right? That's how I kind of envisioned it, right? Because you're working under a brokerage, but you are doing all the marketing and all that stuff, right? So I, I kind of thought this will be somewhat like that, where I'm able to uh, have my own business, market myself, sell myself, have my own little brand underneath this dealership. I was like, I can see myself doing this. That's pretty cool. And another reason why is because we got paid off a of gross, right? And that just means that um, whatever the dealership bought the vehicle at to where we're selling it for, uh, we got 30% off of that. That's pretty good money if you know how to do it right. So the way they kind of presented during training was that um, you could really pretty much offer customers anything. And I mean anything in, in training as an example they're saying hey like we could if you buy a car today we will offer you a free tv first of all i have never received a tv with the purchase of a car before i don't know about you and so that tv would have just came off of my gross ideally right and i was okay with that i bought into that because uh, I didn't mind kind of sacrificing my gross in the very beginning to kind of build up my clientele and build up my business so that I am able to have referrals. Made sense. Again, I went all in. I printed out business cards, flyers. I got a new phone line. I created social media pages. My wife even made a logo for me. Pretty nice logo, I, I will have to say and admit. By the way, as a side note, if you guys are interested in marketing yourself and want to create a logo or some business cards, reach out to me, put a comment in the bottom uh, below and I'll reach out to my wife because that's what she does as a side gig. She did it for a few guys at the dealership as well. One of them actually owns a barbershop and she created a double-sided business card where one side was the dealership information and created his own little logo for the dealership specifically. And of course, on the back of it, on the reverse side, uh, it had information on the, uh, about the barbershop. And so I'm all in and I, you know now I'm sitting in front of customers, right? And I'm like so excited and I'm about to get my first deal in and I go to the, uh, the tower where the managers are sitting and I'm sitting to them and hey, listen, let's let's wrap this up. Let's do X, Y, Z. I'm, I'm okay if it comes off of my gross. And all of a sudden, they're like, no, we're not doing that. Wait, why not? No, they just won't budge, right? And I'm like, okay, but it's coming out of my gross. Like we're not we're not we're not lowering it that much or whatever it was. So this customer's gonna walk. I, I was with them for like two hours. Yeah. It kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I was told as long as I get a unit out, right? I could be as creative as possible, as creative as I, as I want. And it, and I understand that it comes off my gross and we get a unit out, it's all good. And we're helping a customer. 
What's the problem? Now, even I felt like I got bait and switched. Not a good feeling to have, right? It's really difficult for, uh, for a dealership that pays salespeople gross and not come off as that sleazy salesperson. Because in order to get paid well, you gotta jack up the price somehow. And people will do that. You'd be surprised how tunnel vision some customers are and not even realizing the sticker price. They don't know numbers until they are presented a pencil. And that's a shame, right? And uh, I'll tell you a quick story uh, that you know I overheard. A salesperson was helping out a customer and a customer came in uh, with wads of cash because his dad had passed away and left them a lot of money. So the salesperson kept the mental note on that. So when it was time to present the pencil, he jacked at the price like a lot, like, he, he, you know, so he could make a lot on gross. He ended up making over 10 grand off of that one car deal. And the customer was like, okay, sure, whatever, you know, and because, you know, his dad left the money. So he wasn't really looking at numbers, really. He was like, okay, done. Not taking anything away from that salesperson. He knew how to uh, work the system. At the end of the day, the customer, you know, everything's black and white, everything's transparent, signed it, and he was happy with it. It is what it is, right? It just doesn't sit well with me. I don't think that would be something I would have even thought of doing, I'll be honest with you, right? So now I'm starting to think like, okay, this is really not for me. Then when I'm trying to do good things, I end up getting cursed out at. I got cursed out a few times, actually, you know? One, I'm presenting the pencil, and this is when I was really, really new, and they were, they added add-ons. Most dealerships would have add-ons, right? Uh, whatever, it's tints or, you know, tire wheel lock or some sort of, like, coating to protect the paint, all that stuff, right? Uh, so those are little add-ons. And that customer was furious, furious. This is the first time I presented a pencil with him, and he saw that, he was like, what's these add-ons? No, I don't want that. He starts flipping, they didn't even give me a chance, they didn't even, like, negotiate. He'd be like, oh, maybe I have to get rid of that. Maybe I could take away, you know, maybe, you know, discount that, whatever. He didn't even give me a chance. He just saw that, and he was like, you know, and he started cursing me out. It was just like, I'm there like, what did I do, you know? Like his wife was, was trying to calm him down and she was like very really apologetic, whatever. It steamed off, right? Uh, the other one I was trying, again, I built a really good rapport. Uh, it was a college student. You know, she saved a lot of money. She worked very, very hard. She had about 20K in her pocket, right? She wanted to buy a car, but she didn't want to use the 20K down, right? She didn't want to finance any any more than that she just wanted to pay 20 grand and she was happy with this vehicle that i presented to her and you know uh, another shady thing to tie into that piece that scenario was that the manager was like hey uh 20 grand so hey tell her we'll give it to her for twenty two thousand. no one just has 20 grand and don't have extra li lying around like are, are you really saying this to me right now is this really happening so you already know that she has 20 grand. The entire time I'm talking to her, she's saying basically like, I don't wanna pay no more than 20 grand. And you want me to get another two grand out of her because you feel like she has an extra couple of thousand dollars laying around? And then she did, so what? Like, that's not what she wanted, you understand? So uh, at the end of the day, we did give it to her, I think for even less than that, it was like 19 and change, right? So she was happy with it, done. I went then to detail her vehicle, fuel it up or whatever, but you know, she had to go home and she said she's gonna come back on Friday because she has to send some more paperwork for the finance and I'll do that then. Uh, because it was a used vehicle, uh, there was issues with her carpet. So uh, I was like, okay, we'll take care of that as well. We'll look into it. So I wrote notes, I spoke to managers. I was off that Friday. So Friday comes, I'm off doing whatever I'm doing that day. I get a phone call, but I was busy uh, and I'm checking my voicemail. And sure enough, it was her. Apparently, she went to the dealership. Not, No one knows anything, apparently, even though everything is written down. And I spoke to many managers saying, hey, listen, we owe her this, this, that, and that. Three hours, she claims that she's been waiting and no one's been doing anything. And she said she claims she's waiting on me. And she's like, you, Eddie. And I'm like, and now I'm the bad guy, right? So I called the manager. I called the store. And you're like, oh, I was taking care of whatever. 
it's like a damn if I do it, damn if I don't. I, I was really trying to help. We actually, I built a really good rapport up to that point. At that point, it was just like, I'm kind of like a little checked out, you know, and I'm like, all right, um, this is not going well. <laughs> this is not how uh, it's going as I, how I planned. Um, you know, I have no free range to do anything, even if it came off of my gross. Um, you know, the dealership just doesn't want to budge or I just feel like they didn't really want to help the customers as much as I want. And I'll be honest with you, one of the salesperson there came up to me and saying like, this is not the business if you're nice. And maybe I'm too nice and maybe he's right. You know, so uh, I, I went in there because I know that there are people out there and I met many of them that are just put in certain situations where, you know, they really, really need a vehicle, you know, whether it's credit, money, whatever the case may be. And I was really hoping that I could po probably help them out somehow, some way. And unfortunately, you know, the dealership just got in the way. There's many times where people will, um, who can't afford their current vehicle say, okay, you know what? Let's get you in another vehicle, but we can't take in your trade because it's worth nothing. And I'm thinking like, hold on, now they got two car payments and they can barely afford the, the one? They're like, oh no, well, let's sit. So you're gonna get that vehicle, the first vehicle repoed and mess up their credits. And I'm that when they come back, they're gonna be even worse off like it was crazy it was just nuts <laughs> worst mistake ever right? it wasn't all bad you know um i did help this awesome couple uh older couple um there were a quick story on them that they were married for 10 years long time ago they since got a divorce they you know reconnected somehow some way and that weekend they were actually getting remarried right so um that's awesome and they just wanted a vehicle to no longer uh be a burden you know like have their independence back they haven't had a car in over 10 years either one of them so it was very difficult to find insurance um they were getting confused over the phone i hope this is not fraud or anything but i you know i called on their behalf you know i was, I was acting at, like if i was their grandkid and uh, they were next to me, you know, they gave me the approval and everything. And I helped them out and I was able to get um, uh, full coverage insurance for an affordable uh, price. So I was really, really happy. And that's, I wanted more stories like that, right? But unfortunately, you know, I was able to help that one. Uh, and I loved them. They were great. And I wish them nothing but the best and happiness, right? Uh, and I got to, hey, meet Robert Kirisaki. Yes that Robert Kurosaki, you know? So yeah, he just randomly came to my dealership. I think that was pretty random, <laughs> you know? He he came back to back days, um, but yeah, he just wanted to see what was out there. And, uh, but uh, you know, apparently he lived not too far from where my dealership was. So, uh, so that was a pretty cool experience. But, and the other great thing about uh, the whole experience was actually the training class. I still keep my work uh, workshop book here um you know there's some great information i can't really like talk about much on here because you guys end up signing some proprietary confidential property agreement thing uh on here uh but uh, my dealership was is actually owned by berkshire hathaway so technically warren buffett is my boss it, it was like if i went to a tony robbins convention motivating thing workshop it, it was fantastic it was great it was motivating um it, everything the world made sense at that moment um you know it's a lot of um they offered a lot of scripts uh they did a lot of hands-on uh scenarios and things like that so um it, it, it was really really great when i left that class the three-day class once i left there i went into that dealership go let's do this let's sell some cars um I, again i really had really great intentions down uh your comments your thoughts uh, let me know if you guys actually uh, worked at a dealership. Let me know your thoughts about dealerships overall. Uh, and let's have a con conversation going. And if you guys have any further questions or information that you want from me, definitely leave a comment in the bottom. I'll definitely respond to all my comments. And it's, and again, guys, if you guys are interested in on business cards or logos, please reach out to me and uh i'll have my and i'll notify my wife and uh we'll kind of figure that out as well guys it's been a pleasure and until next time take care